Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. This week's video, we are rebuilding one of my Swap Medic backpacks from the ground up. As many of you guys know, I have changed up my third line gear, that is the gear that I carry in a backpack for SWAT medical operations a number of times since I started this channel. I'm always trying to learn and grow and really optimize what I have on me. So for the last year, Ish, I have been using my Rats Pack, which is a great medical backpack by Mystery Ranch. However, I've been using that for both the SWAT medical operations that I do, as well as the search and rescue operations that I do. And really what I've found is that that pack is far too large, far too bulky to really be optimized for the SWAT environment. So kind of inspired by a post by Crow Medical, they had this uh, blog that was kind of directing people on how to tier their kit. So you have your first line gear that's on your belt, second line gear that's on your plate carrier, third line gear that's on your back or uh, this kind of pack. And I really wanted to integrate that system so that I'm not carrying a lot of the same things through all of it. I'm not having 18 million tourniquets on me and neglecting other medical issues. And then in the same line, I'm not carrying crazy stuff that I have in the ambulance or the special operations truck that we have right next to us. I just have the things that are realistic to do in a warm zone or hot zone in an active shooter or warrant service, you name it. So I thought it would be interesting to kind of go through, build this from the ground up to kind of how I want it to be and show you guys what my thought process is going into you know each item. Nothing in this video is sponsored. I don't get any money for making this. Um, I will say that any pack will work as well. Uh, there's a lot of different ones on the market. This is the NAR4 aid bag. It's just something that I have. It's kind of been hanging behind me right there for a little while. Um, but you have packs by Mystery Ranch. They have a flat pack like this. Crow Medical makes a really cool pack. Um, First Spear, uh, you, you name it. There's a ton of different brands on the market. So it really doesn't matter what you use so long as it has the room for what you want to put in it and not a ton of excessive room. I'm pretty familiar with this. So this is what we're going to use. First and foremost, on the outside of the pack, I wanna keep this pretty flat. Um, so I don't want a bunch of pouches hanging off it. That's gonna make it uncomfortable to wear if I'm in a seated position in a vehicle and I don't have it right in front of me. So the only thing I'm gonna put on the outside is one tourniquet. Now I still have everything for uh, every aspect of the March algorithm. I'm still going to carry some massive hemorrhage stuff, but I'm not carrying eight tourniquets because I'm working off my body for most of that stuff. So up here, I've got one tourniquet um, and I'm actually gonna fill this with an orange North American rescue tourniquet. Uh, this is just a cat. This is what we carry as a team, what we're mandated to carry. So I'm choosing, choosing orange for this because it's a little bit more, um, optimized for this environment. I have have all black ones in my pockets. I want this one to be visible because if I'm working off this kit, I'm probably not in an active threat area and I don't really care about that concealment. I would rather the receiving medical facility see the tourniquet and be able to um, address it as soon as possible instead of having one be kind of a surprise for you. So that's gonna go on this holder that's just mollied in on the outside. Now, the next thing I'm gonna put in here is I'm gonna have something to address hypothermia. So if we're in a secure point in a large building, this would be, you know, if there's a shooting in an industrial complex or a school where we've kind of penetrated into that building pretty far and we can't extricate people all the way out, I need to be able to care for them for a prolonged period of time, but probably not like days, just minutes to maybe an hour. So I have this ready heat blanket here. This has just multiple cells on it wrap somebody up like a cocoon, keep them warm. Uh, we really want to avoid hypothermia and trauma. And even on a warm day, blood uh, stops clotting super effectively at like 95 degrees. So we need to keep them warm. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna put this up through the back of it. I carry a mega mover in my kit that will allow me to extricate victims as well. So I'm not gonna repeat this on this pack. So that's all we have on the outside. I'll probably have some kind of identifier here. Now people are gonna look at me and be like, why the heck as a paramedic do you have a multi-cam bag? It's our uniform color. I have zero say in it. So yes, I would like a different color for us. We have multi-cam, you know, think of that what you will. All right, so now we're gonna start building off the inside of this kit here. 
Um, and people were commenting, why am I looking up? I've got a camera right there and I'm trying to frame it up. That's why. So in here, we've got a couple different cells. And yes, I did set this up before to make sure everything uh, fit. But um, we are kind of building this from scratch today. So number one, we have the two pockets up here. So I have the tourniquet on the outside. On the inside, I'm gonna throw in bleeding supplies. So I've got a thing of cling wrap, I've got a thing of quick clot gauze, and a uh, NAR emergency compression dressing. This is just a repeat of everything I have on my kit for that massive bleeding. I really want this kit to be able to stand on its own if it absolutely has to. So if I give it to a teammate um, or somebody else or somebody's using it on me, there's everything they need to go through the March algorithm, but there's just not huge repeats of it. Uh, next thing up here. Now, I do want some diagnostic equipment in here because once again, if I'm in a secure area, I need to start doing kind of an advanced assessment, especially when we start talking about um, needle decompressions, finger thoracostomies, things like that. So in this pocket, I'm gonna put in my diagnostic things. And in there, we've got a pulse oximeter. Um, this is a pretty cheap one from Amazon. I'm also going to throw in a color metric device for confirming tube placement. I cannot afford an Emma. I would love an Emma. My team won't buy me one. Um, that's a waveform capno capnograph that goes on the end of the tube. The waveform capnography um, is just very, very expensive technology. So I'll be getting a color changing device. It's not optimal, but it's realistically what I can afford in here. Um, someday I'll get an Emma. And if the company that makes that uh, is watching this, feel free to send me one. I won't say no. So that diagnostic equipment's gonna be in here and it's just kind of an unlabeled bag. Um, I might take a piece of tape and just put it over here, diagnostic, so um, nobody's going into this thinking it's something that's really gonna make a difference in the now uh, if they're treating somebody. So we've got um, bleeding, so this is your massive hemorrhage. Now we're gonna move on to the airway kit. Before I was carrying a ton of different equipment. Um, I had everything uh, from size like two ET tubes up to a size eight. Um, and what I've really found is that I'm never going to use that in the tactical environment. Um, we're going to RSI later if we have to potentially, but in this moment, that's only going to be a distraction for me. So the only airway interventions that I'm going to do uh, on scene, number one, we've got bag valve mask respiration. So this is from uh, micro BVM. I've got a million of these. You open this up, pops up. Um, and it's adult size bag valve mask that we can breathe for people. We don't really do mouth to mouth or anything. And this also has an O2 reservoir on it if you do get somewhere that has a tank. So that guy is gonna sit right in here. It doesn't really secure super well, but this Velcro's down, so it's uh, pretty good. The next thing I'm going to have in there is I have a uh, NAR tracheostomy kit, Krite kit. Um, with a bougie introducer. So this is a really simple concept where it's a short tube for your cricothyrotomy. It's a bougie that's shortened as well that helps you kind of introduce that. And it's pretty much everything you need um, to initiate that. And then next to that, I've got a scalpel um, to actually make that incision. So this is an airway that we will be using in the tactical environment. Still, it's not the direct threat care, but this is one we get them to a secure area. So that is going to sit right in here, and then the scalpel has a place to secure. And then I do have an NPA, which is just a basic airway, um, and that can go right in one of these loops in here. That also has lubrication taped to the back of it as well. Uh, I'm not carrying any ET tubes because I'm probably not going to use them, but I will have a superglottic airway. So this is the eye gel, love them, hate them, um, this will fit, I think, everybody on both the SWAT teams we attach to. Uh, so I'm only carrying one size because these really do not pack down very well at all. If you're at a service that allows you to take things out of packaging like this, I'd say do it. Um, but you do have an increased risk of infection that way, and we have to keep things in their original packaging per our protocols. So that's going to go right on top. And that's really everything I need um, for the airway portion of this kit. Now, coming down just a little bit more, we have the IV. I'm gonna be starting an IV for potential medications we're given. And I've been using these guys for a while. Now, this one is actually expired, so I'm going to get a updated one from North American Rescue. This is just an 18 gauge start kit with a saline lock in it. And this will fit right in here, probably. There we go. 
All right, next to that, I'm gonna have an extra IV catheter. Not that I've ever missed an IV in my life, but I like to have just an extra 20 gauge in case an 18's just not happening. That's gonna go in there. And then a singular saline flush next to it. Uh, additionally, instead of just having um, the capability of an IV, I'm also going to keep an IO in this one. So this is the SAM IO device. I like it because it doesn't have any batteries to it. Very, very simple, low failure rate. So this guy is just gonna slide in there. And then I'm gonna be carrying both the uh, adult needle and the bariatric needle. This one's the more important one. It's a longer needle. Um, and the reason I like this one is because it's generally used for the humoral site, which is a little less painful for conscious patients. Um, but then this guy can still be used uh, for your uh, tibial plateau. I will say that you can actually do the large needle on a neonate if you absolutely had to. You just only insert up to those black lines. So it's a very versatile tool. I carry two sizes just because I have a little bit of space for it and it's gonna be easier to do so um, in, those situation, in those situations. So those are gonna go in there. And then next to that, I'm gonna put in my medication case. So this medication case is from Crow Medical. Um, I have all non-controlled substances in here. We respond from home for this team. So we are allowed to take some of these medications and have them on hand. Now there's more medications than you absolutely need in here. I trade this pack out to my search and rescue pack. So I kind of need a little bit more in it. For a tactical environment, the things I think you absolutely need are going to be um, calcium, TXA, uh, if you have blood, awesome. We don't have the capability of doing whole blood on our team. We have to call critical care, which I'm also a part of that team, um, but we'll need the helicopter on the ground for that or the ground critical care truck. Um, and then I will also add fentanyl and ketamine to this when we get um, to that scene. We have a, a narc box we pull those out. Um, those out of. I obviously can't take those home because they're controlled substances. And then in this side, it's just everything we need to give IM injections and drop medications um, and give them IV. We also carry Narcan here, not for passive exposures, but there is a chance on a warrant service um, you get in and somebody has overdosed, you can use that. So I've got a number of other things in here um, just for reference. I have everything for an anaphylactic reaction and then I have stuff for um, hypoglycemia as well. Uh, this kit is by Crow Medical. It's super high quality, super expensive. So you get what you pay for, but I really like this NART case. And that's gonna slide right in here and kind of just be bundled up. Um, I generally don't like having something inside another case, case inside another case. Medications, if they're coming out on a tactical scene, it means I'm not really in a rush. So that's why we have those here. Now, coming into it, I'm going to just throw some extra things in these pockets. I've got three um, decompression needles, um, probably a little bit of overkill, but they don't take up any space. So I'm just going to throw this in. So if we have to redo it, I'm um, generally probably move to a finger thoracostomy or something else, um, but we do have those there. They can also be used for needle crikes in a rescue situation, or if you have a pediatric patient that needs it. Sharpie, and then a pen light that kind of goes along the diagnostics. And last but not least, um, I do have a stethoscope here. I don't usually like keeping things uh, out in the open because they kind of fall out. For this one, I might just take the stethoscope and just kind of wedge it between there. There's no really good place for it in these kits. Um, I just like having that with all the diagnostic equipment. We're gonna throw a couple more things in the lid here. Um, down here, I've got a thing of Saline IV tubing, no, we're not just dumping saline into trauma patients anymore. However, we're gonna hang this when we hang blood. We'll have saline on one side. Also, if you have somebody with severe dehydration or if they need their eye rinsed, this is something to have. Um, or if we're just using it to give continual medications to somebody, we can have this hung. I will probably trade this out with blood tubing uh, when I get a chance to restock at the hospital so that when we do have blood available to us, we already have a line spike. All they have to do is put the blood on the blood tube, blood Y, it's connected to this, they flush it through and they can start administering. It cuts down a lot of that time. So that's gonna go in this pocket and zipped up. Now, um, up here, one last thing and something that I haven't been carrying in a lot of my kits until recently, I'm gonna be carrying a pelvic sling. So. This is a pelvic binder by Crow Medical, same company that makes this kit. You'll notice the design. Designs are similar. 
Um, they sell this on their website and then they also are gonna be selling on North American Rescue pretty soon, I believe. So kind of a cool device here. It's got the BOA band and it's really, really small, which is why I like it for this kit. So put it in here and you can take like a Nalgene bottle or something really hard and turn this into a um, junctional tourniquet. I would like to see them come out with a junctional tourniquet in the future um, just to have some um, extra uses for it. But that's gonna go up here and that's gonna help with the major bleeding. So really on all, this is kind of the um, pared down kit. I know it still seems like a lot of stuff, but it's things that I've actually used on callouts in the past. Um, it really doesn't have a whole bunch of stuff I don't need. It still will function as a kit from start to um, end if I need it, if I don't even have the gear, but it does play into the gear I'm wearing a little bit better um, because most of the time I'm not gonna be pulling stuff out for bleeding. Uh, one thing that I did forget that I'd probably throw in is like one or two chest seals up here. And I just use the hyphen twin pack chest seals and that just goes along with it being a uh, full kit. So that is all I have for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I look forward to hearing from you if you think I forgot something or you'd add something or take something out. And I will see you next week. Bye.